नमस्ते बिटिया हमेशा खुश रहो बिटिया अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल माई सेल्फ जे वी एंड डॉक्टर रवि जैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिसिन इन फैकल्टी ऑफ होम्योपैथिक साइंस एट ज्योति विद्यापीठ वुमेंस यूनिवर्सिटी चैप्टर इन दिस सीरीज वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ हेमेटोलॉजिकल डिजीजेस इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एनीमिया वी हैव आल्सो डिस्कस्ड हाउ द सेल्स आर फॉर्मिंग what are the different side uh, sites of uh, blood cells formation and its cell lineage and then the, we had discussed about anemia its classification uh, all these things we have discussed in the last lecture today we are going to continue from the last lecture and we are going to discuss about iron deficiency anemia what is iron deficiency anemia this is one of the most commonest cause of anemia that you are going to observe in your daily practice so today we are going to discuss about iron deficiency anemia what is the etiopathogenesis what are the various clinical features what are the different investigations how to investigate them and how to manage a case of iron deficiency anemia all these things we are going to discuss today so let's start with iron deficiency anemia <clears throat> now what is iron deficiency anemia the definition of anemia i have already discussed in the last lecture so today uh, i'm uh, going to start directly with the iron deficiency anemia so iron deficiency anemia when is it going to occur it occurs when the iron losses or physiological requirements exceeds absorption so iron deficiency anemia is going to occur in a patient when there is iron losses or there is physio physiological requirement that is increasing the uh, it is more than what that is absorbed from the intestine so physiological uh, iron deficiency anemia can be seen in case of pregnancy when there is increased physiological demand of the body and it can in the pathological condition it can cause due to excessive blood loss so what is iron deficiency anemia iron deficiency anemia is occurring when there is iron losses or the physiological requirement is exceeding the absorption of the from the body the various causes includes increased physiological requirement and there is pathological loss of blood now in the increased physiological requirement it is it will be seen in case of growth spurts when the child is growing like at the age of 6 months to 2 years and also during the uh, pubertal age group that is 11 to 16 years of age and also the second condition is the pregnancy when the physiological requirement of the body is increasing now second is the pathological blood loss pathological blood loss can be seen in many conditions many conditions like in uh, relation to the reproductive system it can be seen in case of menorrhagia when there is excessive blood loss it can be seen in the gi tract when there is not proper absorption the third is the diet when the uh, individual is not taking proper diet Uh, that is seen most commonly in case of vegans and the elderly and also in case of hookworm manifestations now what are the various causes <clears throat> that are related to the gi tract so related to the gi tract there are various causes or various condition that can lead to the development of iron deficiency anemia it can be seen in case of gi tract bleeding in the third year i have already discussed with you the different uh, causes for upper gi bleeding and lower gi bleeding i believe you must all have gone through it and if you have forgotten it then uh, it's my suggestion to just go back to the book and refer to the different causes of gi bleeding esophagitis is another important cause that is responsible for development of iron deficiency anemia we have esophageal varices esophageal varices that is tearing and blood loss from the esophageal varices Uh, we have hiatus hernia all these are the topics of your third year these we have already discussed in the git system so bleeding gi bleeding we can uh, see esophagitis there are esophageal varices there is hiatus hernia peptic ulcers we can also check for malabsorption inflammatory bowel disease ibd that includes uh, crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis hemorrhoids are the other important cause for uh, development of iron deficiency anemia and ca stomach so what are the different causes we can have physiological cause we can have pathological cause we can have different type of gi causes in physiological cause we have two things one is the growth spurt that is seen 
in the children of six months to two years, 11 years to 16 years. Then second is the pregnancy in which the physiological requirement is increasing. The next is the pathological blood loss that is seen in case of uh, reproductive system, in case of menorrhagia, GI tract diseases, dietary, in case of vegan or elderly and hookworm manifestations. In the GI tract diseases, we have bleeding from the uh, GI tract, we have esophagitis, esophageal varices, we have hiatus hernia, peptic ulcers, we also have malabsorption, inflammatory bowel disease that includes ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. We also have hemorrhoids and CA stomach, etc. Now, what are the clinical manifestations? Whenever a, a patient of iron deficiency anemia is coming to us, how can we manifest? So the manifestation of the underlying disease condition can be due to either anemia or due to either iron deficiency anemia. So we have to check for both the condition, whether it is anemia or specially or specifically iron deficiency anemia. The manifestations of the underlying condition, it includes the pain of the peptic ulcer. If there is peptic ulcers, then the patient can manifest to us as the pains of the peptic ulcers. There can be epigastric lump, lump in the epigastrium that can be seen in case of carcinoma stomach. So manifestations of the underlying disease condition, which includes pain in the peptic ulcers, we have epigastric lump or carcinoma of the stomach. Now, what are the clinical features? So clinical features of anemia we have already discussed. Let's have a quick revision. We have discussed the clinical features of anemia in the last lecture. So uh, the clinical features of anemia includes easy fatigability. So the patient is getting tired very easily. Mm -hmm. There is great weakness. The patient complains of constant headache. That is headache and body ache. So in the clinical features, we are getting headache. Uh, constant headache is there. Uh, there is fatigability, tiredness. The patient is getting tired very easily. There is headache body ache and inability to concentrate. The patient is not able to concentrate properly. There is also giddiness. Giddiness means the feeling of vertigo. So the patient also say that uh, he or she is feeling giddy. Then we also have palpitations. The patient can also complain of palpitations. Palpitations with exertional dyspnea means whenever the patient is doing a lot of exertion, then he or she might be getting dyspnea with anginal pain and congestive heart failure in severe anemia. So due to anemia, there can be easy fatigability, there can be weakness, there is headache, body ache, inability to concentrate, there can be giddiness with palpitation, exertional dyspnea, we can have anginal pain, congestive heart failure in severe anemia. Now, because of the iron deficiency anemia, we are again getting few features. <clears throat> features like if we are looking at the tongue, then the tongue is smooth and pale. There is also symptom of dysphagia. Dysphagia means difficulty in swallowing or eating. There can be atrophic gastritis. Atrophic gastritis that is occurring due to achlorhydria, that is inability to produce HCL in the stomach. There are also various type of nail changes that we are going to see. Coilonychia, that is on the spoon-shaped nails. This we are going to observe in case of RN deficiency anemia. Hepatosplenomegaly. Hepatosplenomegaly is seen in mild degree in case of uh, excessive destruction of the RBC. We can also observe pica. What is pica? Pica is the abnormal craving for indigestible things, different type of indigestible thing like the patient eats uh, sand, chalk and various other things. Miscellaneous. In the miscellaneous symptoms, we can get edema of the feet. The patient, because of uh, excessive development of anemia, the patient can be amenorrhea and there is increased intracranial tension. There can be increased intracranial tension with parotid gland swelling. There can be hair loss and impairment of the T-cell function. So <clears throat> the features due to anemia. So manifestation, how the patient of anemia can manifest to us. Whenever a patient is coming to us, what are the different manifestations that we can see? Manifestations can be due to the peptic ulcer, pain in the peptic ulcer or the epigastric lump in the carcinoma stomach. Due to anemia, there can be easy fatigability. The patient can get fatigued easily. There can be weakness, headache. Headache can be there, body ache, and inability to concentrate. So there is easy fatigability. There is weakness, headache. There is body ache. The patient is not able to concentrate properly. There can be giddiness. 
palpitations, that is exertional dyspnea, anginal pain, and congestive heart failure in severe anemia can be seen. So due to anemia, there can be excessive fatigability, there can be weakness, body ache, headache, inability to concentrate, giddiness, palpitations, exertional dyspnea, anginal pain, and congestive heart failure in severe anemia. Due to severe iron deficiency anemia, the tongue can be smooth and pale. There can be dysphagia with atrophic gastritis that is known as achloridria. There can also be nail changes that can be seen. Nail changes in case of coilonychia. There can be hepatosplenomegaly that is mild and degree. Pica can be there. Pica is the abnormal craving for undigestible things. In the miscellaneous uh, the symptoms, we can have edema of the feet. We can have amenorrhea. There is increased intracranial tension with parotid gland swelling. There can be hair loss and impairment of the T cell function. So we can have edema of the feet, amenorrhea, increased intracranial tension, parotid gland swelling, hair loss, and impairment of the T cell function. Now, what are the various investigations that could be done? In the investigation, we can check for history and physical examination. So first of all, you have to ask about the history from the patient, and you can also go for the physical examination. Physical examination of the skin, the skin will be pale. You can check for the nails and the conjunctiva. Mouth and tongue can be seen and the gums and also the cardiovascular system. So in the investigation, you have to check for the history and the complete physical examination. You have to check for skin, nails, conjunctiva, mouth, gums, tongue, and CVS. Then full blood count and the blood film examination can be done in such patients. We can go for full blood count, <coughs> complete blood cell count, and blood film examination. We can also go for hematinic assays like serum ferritin level, B12, folic acid, level can be checked for in the patient. So we have to check for the serum ferritin. We have to check for vitamin B12 and the folate. We also have to check for the urea and electrolyte level in the blood. We can also go for liver function test, fecal occult blood. So in order to check or search for the <clears throat> blood loss per rectum, we can check for the fecal occult blood. Uh, we can also check for the midstream urine for checking of any kind of RBC loss through the urine and pelvic ultrasound can be done. So in the investigation, we can check for the skin, nails, conjunctiva. History and physical examination has to be done. In the physical examination, we have to check for the skin, nails, conjunctiva, mouth, gums, tongue, and CVS. Then we can go for the full blood count and blood film examination. There can be various hematinic assays that will be done. Serum ferritin, vitamin B12, folate can be checked for. Urea and electrolyte can be seen. We can also check for the liver function test. For checking the blood in the stool, we can check for the fecal occult blood. In the urine, we can check for midstream urine and pelvic ultrasound can be done. Now, how to manage a case of iron deficiency anemia? Whenever a patient of iron deficiency anemia, because this is a very common disease and a lot of patients will be coming to you with this particular disease. So how to manage this disease condition? So first of all, we have to eradicate the cause. We have to search for the cause that is causing iron deficiency anemia. And then we have to eradicate that particular cause of iron deficiency anemia. We can give iron therapy. Iron therapy that includes oral or parenteral iron therapy. And in the extreme cases, blood transfusion can be done. So in dietary, we can do the modifications like taking green leafy vegetables and other food items that is rich in iron. And apart from that, in the medication, we can we have to eradicate the cause, the cause that is responsible for the development of iron deficiency anemia. We have to give iron therapy. Iron therapy can be given local, orally uh, through the folic tablets and parenteral. And the third is the blood transfusion in the cases that are not responding to this particular iron therapy. So this was all about iron deficiency anemia. Now you have to go through your book and you have to write down in your notes about the iron deficiency anemia. You have to write down the etiopathogenesis, the clinical type, the clinical features, the various investigation and the management. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss more about the other type of anemias. So I hope you have understood this session properly. And this session is powered by Digital Version 2.0, Jyoti Vidya Peet Women's University. Uh, if you have any query, please mention in the comment box and I'll try to resolve it. So this was all for today. Thank you very much. Have a good day. We will be meeting in the next lecture with a new topic. Thank you.